Hi. As you can see, I'm Michael Coran. This is AHA. A human among humans. And tonight we're going to explore this book, Move, by Cynthia Winton Henry and Phil Porter. And this, hopefully, will help us enjoy moving. Wouldn't that be nice? We could, because we're, we're always moving, even, I mean, even when we're sitting, let's see if you don't even need to see me when I'm sitting. But, it might be hard to see, but I'm moving a bit. So, in some ways, we're always moving, or you could say we're always dancing. Now, what are the ways to move well? I think if we're just aware that we're moving, our posture and our moves, that can certainly help me and I hope all of us feel the joy that every moment we can enjoy. I'll say that again, it's so important. If we can be aware of how we're moving, that, because moving is, as you see, when children or animals move, there's just a basic natural joy of moving. And if the moving and be interacting with our words, body with mind, that's a recipe to enjoy moving through our day. So in this show, we're going to go over some exercises in this book, Move, of how we can more and more enjoy moving. I think that's clear, right? The goal is you can write CCTV if after doing the exercises, you can't just watch, doing the exercises on this show, you don't feel more joy moving through your day. I should say our day, because this will help me remember some of these exercises in this book. And these two writers, Cynthia Henry and Phil Porter, helped create what's called interplay, which is um, a way to learn how to move with joy through our day. One way to take a sample of interplay is at 11 Garden Street, First Congregational Church, right next to the Sheraton Commander, across the street from Cambridge Common, in the basement, in the kiddies room, the second and fourth Wednesday of every month, at 7.30 to 9, we will interplay together and do some of these moves that I'm going to share with you. The first is called practice swinging. So let's let us do this together, I hope. Rock yourself. Doesn't that feel good? Wow. Such a joy in being part of nature. Trees have joy, dogs, 
cats in their own lane, rabbits of course, grass, sky. Rock yourself. Notice what it creates for you. Certain calm, certain fun, a certain peace. Probably shouldn't say certain. Peace, calm, fun. What happens when you swing or sway Baker? Ooh, I think more fun. Wow. And actually, maybe more peace. Swing and sway Baker. Use your arms. Let your breath be part of the swinging. It's going to be preparation for our new year. So, if I was really brave, we can do this whenever we're moved to. And ask people, by the way, can I do some body exercises while talking to you? Or in between um, parts of our meal, when we're being, even in our... I wonder, some restaurants might let us. Use arms and let your breath be a part of the swing. And I forgot, even though I read it from 81, or to remember lots of things. So my friend, I've lost the chance to have early onset Alzheimer's. I don't think they would call it that at 81. 81 only for a few more months. But let the breath Oh, it's even more. It's really exit. We have in these few minutes, I hope you too, got to a place of ecstasy or some altered state, artistic state, childlike state, whatever you want to call it, more than our ordinary state, <gasps> getting the breathing into it. What does this remind us of? They ask hard questions. Wow, what's the sadness for me of not having this? I don't quite remember this. My father said when I was three, he swung me around with his hands. And then when he wanted to do it to my brother Len, I got in the way. It was one thing I just found hard about my younger brother, that he exists. I'm sure it wasn't for nicest thing a big brother could resent about a younger brother. So the memories are sad. I once remember at the University of Chicago visiting a friend and skipping with them. But by then I was trying to be cool. It wasn't just Easy. You will have easier memories, I do hope. The next basic exercise is thrusting. Thank you for being with me. This gives me a chance to review this. It's more enjoyable this time than last time I did it on television. With one arm repeatedly shoot out some joy energy, not just any energy, joy energy. One arm or your whole body, whoa, joy energy. I can hear it. Yes, we might be apart, but we're sharing joy energy. 
throw imaginary paint on the wall. Thanks to CCTV, we've got a lot of colors on the wall. Whoa! Whoa! Hope we're having fun. It's never too late to be a happy child. Try a little fake flamenco. That would be very... I'm not sure I don't... No, I don't think I know enough. Some, I don't know. But if I haven't embarrassed myself already, you would do better than that. Do five seconds of all-out fake karate using your voice. Oh, I can at least speak. Ah! Sana! Hida! Down! Stuck! Wait, that felt good, though. I notice it feels good, only a tiny bit scary. So we're really learning that bodily moves can really drastically, if not totally, affect our moods. It almost rhymes. Bodily moves can transform our moods. I hope we've done that already. Rest of the show, which is another 55 minutes, no, 45 minutes, is just dessert. The next basic we've done, for your summary, swing, thrust, and, and it's challenging to do them honestly, unless we're told to fake. I mean, I'm well practiced faking. Here I'm swinging. That was conscious. It wasn't really swinging. Swinging is to allow a beyond conscious or beneath conscious or animal awareness. Allow swinging to really come, not from my mind, but from my body, not from me trying, but almost inviting swing come. And we can do thrust badly, which I have, into like, oof, trying to be, you know, like that. Too conscious. Or I can let thrust come almost like a surprise. That is what we're aiming for. So we're we're not doing we're doing it as if no one is watching in a way. Shape. With one arm make a shape. And again, anything worth doing is worth doing badly. We could do it badly as a shape. Or I could allow and be surprised at what shape comes. And that's really allowing our body to speak. Breathe. Oh, I always have to be reminded. Breathe as you move your arm from shape to shape. <sighs> Well, um, I hope for you too, these are all transforming, mood transforming. Enjoy the sculptural quality and the stillness as you arrive in each shape. That is harder. This is for sophisticated people like us, maybe. Enjoy the sculptural quality as you arrive. Oh, is that nice? Realize we have this joy as you arrive. Remember to breathe. We're zipping along. Again, this book is Move. You can get all these exercises um, at um, Interplay. Um, I think it's interplay.com and you could get the book Move. 
Now there was one more word I hope you noticed that I ignored. Enjoy the stillness. as you get to each shape. So we really can trust these writers. Again, Cynthia Winton Henry with Phil Porter. It's because these exercises are really carefully worded. Enjoy the stillness as you arrive in each shape. That is poetry. So we've now, for review, one of the three basic exercises in interplay. Swinging or swaying, never in the breed. Thrusting and shaping. And you know the, the fine points of that. Enjoy the stillness enjoy arriving in the shape. So we can do this maybe all day, especially if we're working at home. Maybe we can eventually learn to do this when we're working in offices or schools. The fourth basic exercise for interplay, you'll never guess, it was a hint. Hang. Practice hanging. Let one arm float or fly like a kite. I should move back so you can see. Move my chair out of the way. You can fly. I remember when my beloved younger brother, he'd visit me at the University of Chicago when we would try to fly a kite. It was sad we couldn't do it. But um, I think much, some of us, or maybe both of us, enjoyed flying a kite. But now we can imagine flying, and I can move back further. There you can see, flying a kite, whoa, let go of what it looks like, which I haven't, see these writers can get right with us now, and feel the drift, weight, dance and flow, feel the drift, Wait, dance, and flow. Oh, I hope you're doing this. I hope, I hope, I hope. Or, now this is, if you remember, class quiz, this is the fourth basic exercise, hang. Or stand, which I and I hope you're doing now, and let your head tilt all the way back. Oh, wow, well, I hope this is in band in Boston. It's so nice. Imagine that you're standing in a redwood grove, looking up toward the sky. Relax and let your weight drift around on the balls of your feet. Well, this should all be banned in Boston, which would be good, then it would spread and be good publicity. Did you know Huck Finn, Walt Whitman, James Joyce? Band in Boston. If 
from here it's fun to pretend like you're drunk for a minute. <laughs> Be careful, I don't want to fall. Be drunk for a minute. Oh, this is a nice place to also enjoy without getting alcohol and everything. We can do it. Be drunk for a minute. Let your weight fall whenever it wants. You have to be a little careful, maybe you too. Oh, oh wow. What do you notice? That's a the, um, big part of interplay after we do something. We just notice, not with judgment. I notice how they're all fun and different. Well, it doesn't say how they're different, but they are. Some are a little peaceful, some are very free, <laughs> walking around, drunk. So remember, these are tools, body tools, movement tools, uh, to spread joy and be joyful through our day. Now here's practice for home, like breathing, reflection. Start with one, don't take this too seriously. Start with one arm or your whole body. Play with swinging, thrusting. That's a pretty weak thrust, but we're not going to judge it. No. Yeah, take that. Thrusting, shaping, and hanging. Let yourself move and go where you are drawn. So we don't decide these things with our mind, certainly. We allow our body, mind, spirit to together move us, something called authentic movement, with eyes closed. We can just move however we want to. Often there's a witness who will notice what happens, but it's very freeing. It's an old mantra, dance as if no one is watching. Um, the last exercise in this chapter, playing with these variations, what gives you energy and what tends to use you up? I think all, that's not a great answer, but all these exercises gave me energy. I was tired as always from writing all day, although walking a mile to in the cold here helped, but this helps more. Are there any patterns that you resist or that confuse you? Well, I've been doing this for, I think, close to two years now, so I don't think so anymore. First thing I used to, I thought I used to have to be like a man, as I told you, and really be a thrust, but no longer. I can be weak faster. What does your body want more of? I would love, which I don't do, said it many times to my wonderful teacher, C.C. King, to remember to do this through the day. I mean, whenever doing it with you is going to be helpful. Because I'll remember, I always could watch this. This is going to be put on YouTube. But this would help me doing this, and maybe if I do it again and again with you, to 
have more and more enjoyable days. What does your body want more of? I guess more of this. I could educate people or close to me and say, I'm, I'm going to doing, I've learned to do these moves. Don't mind me, but they're very much fun if you want to join, or maybe do them very subtly. I mean, we're always moving. We're just as subtle about it. We always have a posture. We're always really hanging. I mean, our, unless we're putting our, in, other than that, our arms are hanging. And we're always swaying a little bit. There's something called a small dance where you, by the creator of contact improvisation. His name escapes this 81-year-old mind at the moment. But where you're just stationary and discover how your body is moving. And this is the small dance. The only thing you have to be concerned about is not to fall. And we're moving in this too. Maybe especially because Cynthia Winton Henry and Phil Porter encourages us to feel the joy in it. Just a small dance, which we're always doing. Okay. We're moving on. We still have 30 minutes to go. Thank you for staying with me. This is a journal exercise again, which we can do verbally. Write down things activities, people, and places that repeatedly bring joy, peace, or aliveness to your body? Well, I would say certainly going to interplay in person twice a month. And now there's uh, interplay pool the first and third Tuesday of the month on Zoom. walking in the park, looking at the trees, seeing even a bare tree in winter outside my window, seeing it looks like all the veins, capillaries. What brings aliveness to your body? That's a little more challenging. I can enjoy it. But this, this has brought aliveness to me. <clears throat> and writing sometimes. I have to be careful what I eat if it brings life or schlock. <clears throat> what foods bring add life? I just made black black bean soup. That seems to help. Noticing the repeating patterns of enjoyment in things that energize and bring you life. Claim what you enjoy. Maybe we're doing that now. I wish I could hear you, but you can hear yourself. Claim those enjoyable moments that give you life. Talking to my beloved roommate. Usually he just radiates energy and light. Gives me life. He's a body worker. You want a great body worker. Write me at aha CCTV 438 Mass Ave, Cambridge Mass. So when you know what gives you life, this is your body of knowledge. 
if you know what you enjoy, are, this is the American question, or are you getting enough of them? I love sharing this with you, knowing I can do this any time. Train friends to do it with me. Other people I call every day to pray. Brief prayers each day in every way. We're going better and better. My dear beloved friend, I call my sister, Beatrice Alba Del Rio. Practice yes to body wisdom. Create a yes for grace today, your own or someone else's. Practice saying yes to what comes your way, especially the good things. I guess to just say yes to the bean soup, to the phone call where we can say each day in every way we're growing better and better. To the prayer with my beloved nurse friend Michelle. Thank you for this day, day, and God for nights and days. I to really take time to appreciate those graceful moments in our lives. There's more. Thanks for staying. Practice see spirit. These writers don't mess around. They're going to change our lives in the world. Imagine if we could spread joy the way coronavirus spreads. Instead of pretending that spirit is invisible, look around you with the idea that spirit that means that creative energy, if you like, another word, is visible in everything. When you see me, you see creative energy. When you see the TV screen, creative energy. This does not take away from the mysterious source or nature of spirit. Where does it come from? I mean, surely the Big Bang was spiritual as well as physical, spreading energy fields throughout the cosmos. What changes if we acknowledge that human spirit and Holy Spirit are in view? Well, if we can see them we can't do a spiritual bypass, which I'm an expert at, and just say, oh, I feel the spirit. We would see that the floor, you sharing this with me, even though I don't know, if I can, oh, it changes things, imagining, wow, a little scary, feeling you're doing this with me. Journal, leaping speed bumps. I hope now we've learned to really respect, value Cynthia Winton Henry and Phil Porter. The whole title of the book is Move What the Body Wants from the Creators of Interplay. And this book also includes access to the music, Light Breathing, which I haven't checked out. But they share that for free. And Interplay is charges just what we can afford when we go. Five dollars for those who can't afford more, or nothing. Remember, f second and fourth Monday of every month. Second and fourth Wednesday. I just wanted to see if you're paying attention. 
second and fourth Wednesday, 7.30, First Congregational Church, Levin Garden Street, in the basement, in the kitty room, fittingly. Remember something you once feared that you now do well. Gee. Maybe what comes to mind is solitude. I used to be afraid of being too alone. I would lose energy. And now that I discovered it's okay to feel nothing, I've got plenty of nothing, nothing's plenty. For Once I felt not afraid of the nothingness inside, it starts to feel spacious. The great writer, Longshoreman, who said, most of us are afraid of the nothing inside. And he said, it's so hard to hide from what isn't there. Well, it took me almost 80 years to really, I knew that quote for years and years. Eric Hoffa, Longshoreman. And trust him not one of us academics. Most of us are afraid of the nothing inside. It's so hard to hide from what isn't there, but I tried. Maybe men especially, women know that spaciousness is what enables them to give birth. But maybe guys like me are really afraid of feeling nothing. But once we embrace it, it might take years, decades, like for me, it can just, like a woman actually, allow the spaciousness to, that's what we're doing here, let whatever moves come, whatever words come. It's like we have our own womb with a view, men as well as women. Has your success in dealing with this experience tempered your memory of the fear? Oh, yes. Has your success, you might have a different fear, in dealing with your fearful experience tempered your memory of the fear? Maybe we're not afraid of it anymore. Looking back, what helped you become less fearful? I think I said that. Used to, after I stopped teaching during the pandemic and just sat with people learning, exploring a very challenging novel, Finnegan's Wake, I felt so sad not being a teacher, but just a member. And everybody seemed to have a family with children. I was not capable of that. And after crying for months at this meeting and they loved me anyway and liked me I was funny I felt accepted I had one experience in Israel where I cleaned the chicken coop for eight hours grinding with a um, um a mechanical grinder we plugged in, grinding manure into the ground, because the chickens like that. And at the end of eight hours, I saw a rabbi on the kibbutz as I came out of the coop, said, how are you doing, Michael? And this might have been the first time I could remember, even as a kid, that I didn't have to be witty or wise. I was a valuable human being just because I was covered with shit. And that, I just said, fine. And it was so freeing, but it took a while to really learn this in my marrow, that it was really okay 
to feel like nothing, to be empty, even to hug it. And that at times can turn into very nice spaciousness. Could you imagine choosing, approaching a new challenge as more of a speed bump than a wall? Sure, now that we've shared this, I hope this is true for you too. Could you practice an easy shrug and say, I can do that, I can feel like nothing again, wow. Instead of, oh no, no, what am I going to say or do? I have nothing to say or do. After reflecting on these questions, shake out all the fear stuff. Wow. Shake it out, all of it, out of your body. No more fear stuff. Woo. And take a deep breath. I hope you're still doing this. Hope this is as remotely good for you as it is for me. You never know. I've enjoyed imagining you're here. Practice and journal the boundaries of your space. I'm just reading you the exercises from this book. You can have wonderful words about these exercises. Move by Cynthia Winton Henry and Phil Porter. Now this is with a partner. Maybe we can imagine doing it together or not. With a partner, stand 10 feet apart from one another. As one partner stands still, the other slowly Approaches. Hi. When standing still, do you notice sensations as your partner approaches your space? There may be wow, you get closer to help. There may be several thresholds. What's it like to have your physical boundaries crossed? Woo. Even now it feels to me we're getting too close. Too much, maybe. Have the other person stand still and notice as you walk up to them. Explore this with different partners. It is different from person to person and time to time. Next practice. Witnessing the good. We only have 13 minutes left. Stay the course if you can. Take a deep breath. Let it out with a sigh. C.C. King calls this Bebo. Breath in. Breath out with a sigh. Breath in. Ah. Bebo. Massage your forehead and jaw. Oh my, hope you're having still fun. Engage your easy focus. See, she says, let that, let your focuser relax. Easy focus. Witness your surroundings. What are you most attracted to? I like my warm winter coat on the table. I could show you. Share. 
Here it is. Can you let it in? I have one dear friend and talking to him is like talking to a person who has an invisible shield around him. I think I was like that for much of my life. Before your time, they used to have a toothpaste commercial, guard all, and they have this invisible shield between the announcer and, let's say, a golfer behind the field shield, and the golfer would hit a golf ball, and it would, of course, bounce off the shield, and the promise was that Colgate guard all would protect your teeth from cavities, the way the shield protected the announcer. I told my friend about it, and I think it helped a bit. He started, certainly he didn't keep cutting me off when we talked, not give me a chance to talk. I think it was hard for him, and a very intrusive mother, but to just take in words hard for me too. Just breathe in the words. They won't hurt me now the way they used to. And you let it in. Practice and journal witnessing is for you. Shake out your body. You still have the energy to do this. I hope you do too. Whoa. Shake out the critical, hard, cynical points of view. No, we're going to be more accepting and loving. No, I just learned arguing isn't just enjoyable as it was for me. It's uh, how can I put this? I more enjoy just being with someone. Arguing can contribute to that. But I don't just argue because it's enjoying to, uh, enjoyable to argue. My father and I used to argue. My brother Len found this hard to hear. Which is longer, longer or longest? And I say, Dad, longest means it's the longest. And he said, no, longer is longer. And I said, no, we would just keep doing this. It's actually fun. But my two-year younger brother thought it was a bit crazy. <laughs> and he's, he was a bit right, but it was still fun. With your easy focus, notice specifically what comes to you as good. CCTV is doing this for us. Wow. But to really take it in, not just say thank you, but to really take in this gift. I can bring tears to my eyes right now. Here's my also I lost my place. That could bring tears to my eyes. Whatever you take in is there for you. Like this CCTV, Alfonso, Heinz. Josh, what gifts? Can you have it, feel it? For some reason you have noticed and received a particular experience. It may be random or it may be a gift of the universe. It is yours alone to unwrap and enjoy. And at least for me, I, it was easier and safer to thank God 
for feeling okay and not thank my roommate, my dear friend Michelle, Alfonso, Heinz, and Josh. It's, as I now believe, we're all part of divinity, co-creating divinity. And God certainly wants us to thank the divinity in other people. As my friend John Gittens, seven-year-old daughter, said to him, Just remember, Daddy, you don't own me. And I'm sure God, who is co-creating us from the very beginning, knows he doesn't want to own us. He wants to be part of the team. or she, or they. In Hebrew, one of the words for God is Elohim, which is often a plural, meaning judges, or gods. When you witness a person, or for the same kind of gift to come your way, for something they say to or are. Wow, just to breathe that in, all these dear people that we might not really appreciate as deeply as we could. The next is appropriately named Practice and Journal Savoring. And we're not even halfway through this book. If one of my guests bails on me next time, I might finish this with you. At a park, cafe, on a walk, or sitting at home, release yourself from obligations to help or analyze anyone for a moment. This is retirement, which I can appreciate at 81, and I'm trying to write books. Open your easy focus to the receiving mode. Turn into sensory goodness. Even this rug I'm on is much warmer than the floor. Breathe it in. Or you can breathe in the floor even. Breathe in the sensory goodness. What a book this is. Recommended to me by my teacher, C.C. King. Savor it, and then let it go, which we're going to have to do soon. Time flies when we're having fun. We have a little less than three minutes. Practice the power of affirming. When you notice someone that moves you today, Tell them. All you have to do is say thank you. Keep it brief. Savor this grace with them if they can receive it and then let it go. Thank you, roommate, for radiating light and peace and for your wisdom. Make me cry. Thank you, dear Michelle. Oh my God. For laughing at my jokes, among other things. It doesn't help the body to hoard the good. Make room for more. That might be a good place to end, but we still have a minute. Let's see, I don't want to be greedy. Maybe that would be a good place to end. There's always room for more. So thank you. Thank you again for joining me, either seeing this on YouTube or right now live. And we can thank each other if you're watching me on YouTube.
true we can. This little light of thine and mine, we're gonna let it shine. This little light of thine and mine, we're gonna let it shine. This little light of mine and thine, we're gonna let it shine. Let it shine. Let it shine, let it shine.